Salt NaCl is an ionic compound made of sodium and chloride ions which has been exceptionally important to humans for thousands of years, because it is one of the substances upon which all of life evolved to depend. Humans, like all life, need a supply of salt in order to simply survive. Salt's ability to preserve food was a foundation of civilization. It helped to eliminate the dependence on the seasonal availability of food and it allowed travel over long distances. However, salt was difficult to obtain, and so it was a highly valued trade item to the point of being considered a form of currency by certain peoples. Many salt roads, such as the Via Salaria in Italy, had been established by the Bronze Age. Today, salt is almost universally accessible, relatively cheap and often iodized. History All through history the availability of salt has been pivotal to civilization. In Britain, the suffix, which in a place name means it was once a source of salt, as in Sandwich and Norwich. The Natron Valley was a key region that supported the Egyptian Empire to its north, because it supplied it with a kind of salt that came to be called by its name of Natron. Solnit, Sata, the earliest known town in Europe was built around a salt production facility. Located in present-day Bulgaria, archaeologists believe the town accumulated wealth by supplying salt throughout the Balkans. Salt was of high value to the Hebrews, Greeks, the Chinese, Hittites and other peoples of antiquity. Aside from being a contributing factor in the development of civilization, salt was also used in the military practice of salting the earth by various peoples, beginning with the Assyrians. In the early years of the Roman Republic, with the growth of the city of Rome, roads were built to make transportation of salt to the capital city easier. An example was the Via Salaria, leading from Rome to the Adriatic Sea. The Adriatic, having a higher salinity due to its shallow depth, had more productive solipons compared with those of the Tyrrhenian Sea, much closer to Rome. The word salary comes from the Latin word for salt because the Roman legions were sometimes paid in salt, which was quite literally worth its weight in gold. During the late Roman Empire and throughout the Middle Ages salt was a precious commodity carried along the salt road into the heartland of the Germanic tribes. Caravans consisting of as many as 40,000 camels traversed 400 miles of the Sahara bearing salt to inland markets in the Sahel, sometimes trading salt for slaves. Timbuktu was a huge salt and slave market. Salt in Chinese history was both a driver of technological development and a stable source of revenue for the imperial government. Biblical references in the Old Testament Mosaic law calls for salt to be added to all burnt animal sacrifices and compares the priestly covenant between God and the Kohen patrilineal, descendants of our own to salt. The book of Ezra associated accepting salt from a person with being in that person's service. In Ezra chapter 4 verse 14, the adversaries of Ezra and company, in their letter of complaint to Artaxerxes I of Persia explain their loyalty to the king. When translated, it is either stated literally as because we have eaten the salt of the palace, or more figuratively as because we have maintenance from the king. Salt is used as a metaphor in the Bible. In the New Testament, Matthew chapter 5 verse 13, Jesus said, You are the salt of the earth. He added that if the salt loses its flavor, it is good for nothing but to be trampled. Jesus said this in order to show his disciples how valuable they were and this saying is commonly used today to describe someone who is of particular value to society. In addition, the preservative quality of salt is in view here to show how the disciples were called to preserve the society and the world around them from moral decay. On another occasion, according to the Gospels, Jesus commanded his followers to have salt within them. In Luke chapter 14 verses 34 to 35, Jesus concludes a series of parables on the cost of following him with the parable of spent salt. It seems that those who follow him are to be like the salt. From this we learn that those who follow him should expect to be spent as chunks of salt after much use. 
Furthermore, they should prepare to be useful until the end, for the long haul. In this parable, it is good to be used as salt and bad to become useless salt. This illustration ties in with the two preceding ones of counting the cost. The disciples must prepare, by counting the cost, to be salty for as long as they are needed. Cities and wars salt has played a prominent role in determining the power and location of the world's great cities. Liverpool rose from just a small English port to become the prime exporting port for the salt dug in the Great Cheshire salt mines and thus became the entrepot for much of the world's salt in the 19th century. Salt created and destroyed empires. The salt mines of Poland led to a vast kingdom in the 16th century, only to be destroyed when Germans brought in sea salt. Venice fought and won a war with Genoa over salt. However, Genos of Christopher Columbus and Giovanni Cabito would later destroy the Mediterranean trade by introducing the New World to the market. Cities, states and duchies along the salt roads exacted heavy duties and taxes for the salt passing through their territories. This practice even caused the formation of cities, such as the city of Munich in 1158, when the then Duke of Bavaria, Henry the Lion, decided that the bishops of Freising no longer needed their salt revenue. The Gable, a hated French salt tax, was enacted in 1286 and maintained until 1790. Because of the Gabelles, common salt was of such a high value that it caused mass population shifts and exodus, attracted invaders and caused wars. In American history, salt has been a major factor in outcome of wars. In the Revolutionary War, the British used loyalists to intercept revolutionaries' salt shipments and interfere with their ability to preserve food. During the War of 1812, salt brine was used to pay soldiers in the field, as the government was too poor to pay them with money. Before Louis and Clark set out for the Louisiana Territory, President Jefferson in his address to Congress mentioned a mountain of salt supposed to lie near the Missouri River, which would have been of immense value, as a reason for their expedition. During India's independence movement, Mohandas Gandhi organized the Salt Satyagraha protest to demonstrate against the British salt tax. English, which towns, which and which are names associated with brine springs or wells in England, originally derived from the Latin vacuus, meaning place. By the 11th century use of the which suffix in place names was associated with places with a specialized function including that of salt production. Several English places carry the suffix and are historically related to salt, including the Fort Cheshire, which is of Middlewich, Nantwich, Northwich and Leftwick, and Droitwich in Worcestershire. Middlewich, Nantwich, Northwich and Droitwich are known as the Doomsday Wishes, due to their mention in the Doomsday Book. An indication of the significance of the salt working towns in the economy of the region, and indeed of the country. Salt trade monopolies over salt production and trade were essential aspects of government revenue in imperial China and most of the 20th century. During modern times, it became more profitable to sell salted food than pure salt. Thus sources of food to salt went hand in hand with salt making. The British controlled salt works in the Bahamas as well as North American cod fisheries. The search for oil in the late 19th and early 20th centuries used the technology and methods pioneered by salt miners, even to the degree that they looked for oil where salt domes were located. Salt production On an industrial scale, salt is produced in one of two principal ways the evaporation of salt water or by mining. Evaporation can either be solar evaporation or using some heating device. Solar evaporation of seawater In the correct climate it is possible to use solar evaporation of seawater to produce salt. Brine is evaporated in a linked set of ponds until the solution is sufficiently concentrated by the final pond so that the salt crystallizes on the pond's floor. Open pan production from brine One of the traditional methods of salt production in more temperate climates is using open pans. In open pan production, salt brine is heated in large, shallow open pans. 
The earliest examples of this date back to prehistoric times and the pans were made of either a type of ceramic called briquettage, or lead. Later examples were made from iron. This change coincided with a change from wood to coal for the purpose of heating the brine. Brine would be pumped into the pans and concentrated by the heat of the fire burning underneath. As crystals of salt formed, these would be raked out and more brine added. Closed pan production under vacuum The open pan salt works has effectively been replaced with a closed pan system where the brine solution is evaporated under a partial vacuum. Salt mines in the second half of the 19th century Industrial mining and new drilling techniques made the discovery of more and deeper deposits possible, increasing mined salt's share of the market. Although mining salt was generally more expensive than extracting it from brine via solar evaporation of seawater, the introduction of this new source reduced the price of salt due to a reduction of monopolization. Extraction of salt from brine is still heavily used. For example, vacuum salt produced by British Salt in Middle which has 57% of the UK market for salt used in cooking. Other salt uses the earliest systematic exposition of the different kinds of salts, its uses, and the methods of its extraction was published in China around 2700 BCE. Hippocrates encouraged his fellow healers to make use of salt water to heal various ailments by immersing their patients in sea water. The ancient Greeks continued this, and in 1753, English author and physician Dr. Charles Russell published The Uses of Sea Water.